I'm Sebastian, a final year PhD student and research associate at the System Security Lab at the University of Oxford. And this paper was joint work with my colleagues, Jack Sturgis, uh, Simon Birnbach and Ivan Martinovich. So many people still believe that um, electric vehicles are not as convenient as uh, vehicles with combustion engines due to their limited range and that they need to be charged more often. To actually uh, take away this range anxieties from people, there are many different solutions. For example, one is deploying a lot of charging stations at destinations, which is also known as destination charging. So for example, as you can see in this photo here, um, there are charging stations now at parking garages, supermarkets, um, hotels and restaurants. This means you can actually charge your vehicle while you do your shopping or enjoy your dinner. However, before you can actually start charging, you need to authenticate and pay for your charging session. So this can be done uh, with a smart card or a mobile application, which is usually provided by a charging station operator. Uh, however, as I just said, it's provided by a charging station operator, so it's often linked to one specific network. So there is also the possibility often to use actually uh, credit card payments or mobile uh, payments. In fact, actually, um, the German government requires um, from July 2023 onwards that charging stations have um, contactless or like card, accept card payments. Um, to make it even more convenient for the user, there are ways such as um, plug and charge and uh, auto charge, which use some kind of identifier which is linked to a vehicle to enable charging. So once you plug in your uh, charging cable into your vehicle, the uh, payment information which is linked to your vehicle is sent to the charging station and charging is authorized and you can just uh, leave. So the big issue here is, um, which all of these method methods have in common, if the adversary gets hold of your uh, payment uh, information, they can actually just charge their vehicle and you pay for it. So for example, if they steal your RFID card um, or they steal your um, your MAC address, which is used for auto charge, they could use this to authenticate a charging session. And to overcome this, this issue, we propose a new and novel system, which is called Cable Auth. So Cable Auth uses the unique movements the user does while actually uh, removing the charging cable from the charger and plugging it into the vehicle to, um, to uh, authenticate the session as a second factor. Um, we propose to put an IMU sensor into the handle of the charging cable to collect the data during the movement and during the plug-in phase um, to then yeah, provide the second factor. However, uh, to make this approach compatible to uh, charging stations which are not equipped with this cable with an IMU in it, um, we also looked at using a wrist-worn um, sensor, for example, a smartwatch, uh, which then collects the IMU data. So let's have a look at our threat model. We assume two different attackers. The first one is an adversary who has access to your vehicle and all the additional information that is necessary to initiate a charging session. This could be, for example, just by stealing a vehicle which implements a plug and charge. So as soon as the attacker plugs the car into the charging station, it will automatically charge. The second um, adversary we consider is um, who conducts a credential theft. For example, stealing the credentials for your mobile application, which then um, allows the adversary to log into the app and authorize the charging. For our data collection to train actually our classifiers and uh, train or um, yeah, train uh, cable auth, we build a replica charging station, which you can see in the middle here. So this is in our lab. Um, before like setting this up, we went to an actual real world charging station, which you can, can see on the left. Uh, we did some measurements to make sure that we actually replicate um, a realistic uh, charger in the lab. And then we also had the vehicle, which you can see um, on the right um, photo. Um, this is just a cable holder, uh, which uh, we use the Volkswagen ID3, so the height of a Volkswagen ID3, roughly. Um, you can also see on the right the charging cable we used. We used the Type 2 AC charging cable. Um, and we added some contact sensors on top of it to make sure we can actually get um, the timestamps when the user unplugs the cable and plugs it into the vehicle. 
uh, we, instead of um, adding an IMU, for example, a Raspberry Pi, we use the smart ring here because the smart ring is very, very small and has only um, a uh, light or is lightweight, which means that the user actually um, doesn't feel a difference while handling the cable. So during our user study, we uh, had 20 participants, which conducted three separate uh, sessions, which means uh, in each session, they um, charged the car 10 times, which means they unplugged the cable and put it into the charging, into the uh, vehicle. And we had a two minutes break between the first session and the second session, and then a longer break between the second and the third session. In each session, uh, the participants conducted a ten, 10 charging sessions while also wearing the smartwatch on their dominant hand. So we collected actually data from the IMU on the charging cable and uh, from the, the watch. In total, we conducted uh, 30 charging sessions per, per participant. And here you can see uh, the results. So on the left, you can see the data, the IMU data collected by the cable handle. And you can see that the, there is no movement at all because the handle was actually in the charging station or in the uh, charging um, holder, charging cable holder. And we segmented this data into four second long windows uh, because we found out that actually four seconds is enough to ensure that there is no overlap between uh, the unhook gesture and the plug-in gesture. Uh, to get the ground truth when the cable was unplugged or plugged into the car, we used magnetic contact switch sensors, as I showed on the previous slide. And this is the red line you can see at zero. Uh, we then used uh, smaller windows and some offsets to find the best parameters um, which performed to find the best performance. Here you can see the results for the unhook gesture, which means that's the gesture when the um, user unhooks the cable from the charger. So on in the first um, bit, you can see the data or the results, the equal error rates for the handle data. So these were classifiers um, trained on the data from the handle. And we can see that we achieved an equal error rate of 6% using the handle data. While for the smartwatch, we only achieved um, an equal error rate of 8%. So we also looked at the plug-in gesture and actually found out that in contrast to the unhook gesture, here the watch now outperforms the smart ring or the handle data uh, with 6% versus 11%. This means that uh, the handle data yields the best equal error rates when classifying the unhook gesture, while the smartwatch data is best for the plug-in gesture. On the previous slides, we saw the results for separate classifiers. However, um, the unhook and plug-in uh, movement is actually one arm movement. So it's like one continuous um, movement. So we also investigated how the model would perform if we just combine the two gestures. So here in this table, you can actually see um, the results, the equal error rates for the combination of the two gestures. And we found that instead of improving the results, the combination of the two gestures actually reduced the performance of our system to an equal error rate of 9%. So our model is designed to act as a second factor for, for an existing authentication system. As such, we can tune our classifier to meet the needs of the system. For example, we evaluated the security gains that our model actually could provide without reducing the usability. This means that we aim to minimize the false negatives, or in other words, the false rejection rate. In the left figure, you can see the false acceptance rate um, of our classifier for the false rejection rate of 0.01%. We see that our model tuned for usability provides a false acceptance rate of 18%. In contrast, the right figure shows the results of our classifier tuned to maximize the security of the system with a false acceptance rate of 0.01%. In such a scenario, our system provides a false rejection rate of 59%. In this paper, we demonstrated that an IMU sensor embedded in the handle of an electric vehicle charging cable provides sufficient data to extract unique movements made by the user while unhooking and plugging in the charging cable into the vehicle. 
these like uh, unique use uh, movements can be used to as a second factor to authenticate the payment. Our authentication model achieved an equal error rate of 6%. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You can also find the data of our experiments and the uh, evaluation source code on JEC's GitHub repository with the link just provided here. Thank you.